dearies, it's good to see you again. <laughs> I just love giving you these lessons on menopause and all it entails. And some of the things we address in this education are not an absolute part of menopause per se. Some of the topics pertain to diseases that are more common in menopausal women. Endometrial uterine cancer is one of them. This is the second video in the unit on uterine cancer, and it's video number 321. And in my book, regardless of whether you have the first edition or the second edition, you'll find that all of chapter 31 is on uterine cancer. However, even if you have the book, this video will greatly enhance your understanding of our topic today. In the last video, I oriented you to the specific kind of uterine cancer that we'll be addressing in this unit. It's called endometrial uterine cancer. It involves cancer that begins in the inner lining of your uterus, which is this, and it originates in the columnar glandular cells, columnar as in column, glandular cells that respond to estrogen and progesterone. Today, I want to talk about the incidence and prevalence of endometrial uterine cancer. In other words, how common is it? How much do you hear about endometrial uterine cancer? Is it a cancer with which you have some familiarity? Or have you never given it much thought because you never hear much about it? Sometimes I like to start by putting things into perspective for you. It helps frame your focus. So let's begin with gynecologic cancers in general. This is a representation of your reproductive tract. As I indicated last week, there are only four anatomical structures comprising your reproductive tract. You have your uterus, your cervix, your fallopian tubes, and your ovaries. Okay? When it comes to cancers, you can get cancer that originates in any of the four sides. And as a group, they are all called gynecologic cancers. But my question to you is this. Of these four sites, in your reproductive tract, which is the most common site of cancer? Is it the uterus, the cervix, the fallopian tubes, or the ovaries? Well, what you'll discover is that the answer depends on a variety of things, such as age, level of development of a country, <laughs> personal characteristics of the patient population, lifestyle, and other things. Have you ever even, even given thought to this? You see, by getting this education, you start considering all sorts of things you've never even considered before. So if you had to put the cancers for these four anatomical sites in order of how common they are in post-menopausal women, how would you order them? Let's make it a quiz question. A kind of annoying one, actually. <laughs> For gynecologic cancers in postmenopausal women, the correct order from most common to least common is A, ovarian, cervical, fallopian tube, uterine, or B, fallopian tube, cervical, uterine, ovarian, or C, cervical, ovarian, uterine, fallopian tube, or D, uterine, ovarian, cervical, fallopian tube. Or E, cervical, uterine, ovarian, fallopian tube. F, ovarian, fallopian tube, cervical, uterine. Or G, uterine, cervical, ovarian, fallopian tube. Or H, fallopian tube, ovarian, cervical, and uterine. <laughs> Was that a piece of cake? <laughs> piece of cake. Why that implies something that's easy, I will never know. But here's the answer in bold. 
So you see that it's uterine, cervical, ovarian, and then fallopian tube. So while the answer could vary depending on context, confining our focus to menopause makes it really easy. Of the four sites in your reproductive tract, the most common site of cancer in menopausal women is by far the uterus. And to tie this in with our narrowed focus on only uterine cancer that originates in the inner endometrial lining of your uterus, endometrial uterine cancer is the most common type of uterine cancer. So when we addressed how common endometrial uterine cancer is, it's best to do so from a few different angles. Of all cancers occurring in women, endometrial uterine cancer is the fourth most common cancer. And of all gynecologic cancers, it's the most common. Now long ago, in previous videos, I taught you the definitions for some terms that constitute statistics. Let's review them. Risk refers to the chance of ever getting endometrial uterine cancer during your entire lifetime. And it turns out that the risk of ever getting endometrial uterine cancer is between 1 in 29 and 1 in 39. That equates to somewhere between a 3.6% risk and a 6% risk. Of course, this statistic completely ignores all the variables that actually determine your individual risk of getting endometrial uterine cancer, which I'll address in the next video. This is just the average overall risk for women in general. Incidence refers to the number of new cases of endometrial uterine cancer over a given period of time. And prevalence refers to the number of existing cases of endometrial uterine cancer at a specific point in time. The exact numbers for incidence and prevalence of endometrial uterine cancer are not as important as the trends in incidence and prevalence. What we want to know is whether the number of women getting endometrial uterine cancer is increasing or decreasing. And what are the reasons for the increase or decrease? Well, it turns out that the incidence and prevalence of endometrial uterine cancer are increasing. And it's due to the things we'll discuss in the next video that constitute risk factors for endometrial uterine cancer. Now, sometimes you find interesting quirks about the incidence of a disease that don't fit well with another aspect of that same disease. For instance, the incidence of endometrial uterine cancer is higher in high-income countries than it is in low-income countries. But the mortality rate is lower in high-income countries than it is in low-income countries. Another interesting quirk is that the incidence of endometrial uterine cancer is 30% lower in black women than it is in white women. But the mortality rate for black women is 80% higher than it is for white women. And that brings us to the next statistic, which is mortality rate. Mortality rate is another statistic of great importance for any kind of cancer. As I've taught you, mortality rates are usually described as survival rates rather than as death rates. And instead of designating overall survival rates, survival is divided into time frames. So for cancers, there are usually statistics for one year, five year, and 10 year survival, with the five year survival being the most common. When it comes to endometrial uterine cancer, the overall five-year survival rate is 81%. That's high, so that's good. But again, this is a population-wide statistic. It ignores all the specific personal factors that determine survival rates. And it ignores the degree of spread or stage of the cancer, which is the most important determinant of survival. So all these figures for statistics really don't 
tell you much, do they? You know, what I love about statistics is that they help you compare one disease to another in terms of overall effect. But what I hate about statistics is that they can be very vague. And of course, they're always changing. Whenever you look at statistics, notice the dates for the statistics. Notice the location for the statistics. And notice the racial or ethnic group for the statistics. It can all be very confusing because you usually just want the bottom line, but you rarely find it. Instead, you find all sorts of numbers in the form of percentages or fractions, but rarely both. And because statistics are reported in different ways, it can be very difficult to compare disease rates, risk, incidence, prevalence, and mortality rates. So instead of dwelling on the statistics, I prefer to focus on risk factors. Risk factors are specific, and they enable you to apply the details to you personally. So that's what we'll discuss next week. The summary is that endometrial uterine cancer is the most common gynecologic cancer in postmenopausal women. And the most common type of uterine cancer in general is endometrial uterine cancer of the inner lining inside your uterus. And that's why it's important to include it in our education on menopause. So this was very short, but that's okay. It was important to address it before moving on to risk factors. Come back in a week when we'll dive into the meat and potatoes of endometrial uterine cancer and delineate the risk factors. If you want me to help you with anything at all or tailor all the information specifically to you, just schedule a consultation with me at menopausetailor.me. I do them with women all over the world via video, con video conferencing. That's the only way I do them. So no matter where you are, I can help you. And I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, so no matter where you are, you can follow me. But the only place to subscribe to my YouTube channel and newsletter is right here. <laughs> so do that now. <laughs> and I will see you in a week. <laughs> Bye.